Hello, welcome back to Fun Analysis. We are back for the 2022 year. This match we're gonna be breaking down today is gonna to be from the Israel District event number one. This is quarterfinals five between the number one and number eight alliance. This match features 1690 Orbit, 1577 Steampunk, 6104 Desert Eagles to round out the red alliance. On the blue alliance, we have 7067 Team Streak, 5614 Team Sycamore, and Team 8223 The Mariners. Out of those teams, 1690 is a pretty notable team this year. They released a reveal video pretty early and everyone was super surprised by how cleanly their robot could intake and shoot almost instantly. And although that definitely helped them in getting the high score of 146 points, it's not purely just their robot, and it's more so their strategy of how they are running this match that we're gonna look at. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. First updates now is supported by Kettering University. Kettering University hosts three co-op employment fairs each year for incoming and current students. Participating in the co-op employment process at Kettering is a great way to begin turning robotics experience into a professional career to earn money towards graduating debt-free. If you are a senior, it's not too late to apply at kettering.edu slash apply. Competition season is here. Head on over to thebluelines.com to catch all the events each week. Don't forget to submit your clips of the week to discord.gg forward slash first updates now. Vote in the FRC Top 25 and play in our free fantasy pick'em. Catch fun shows live on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. We're going to set up this match real quickly. It's a 1v8 quarterfinals in a year where the number one alliance is absolutely dominating almost every single tournament. Um... There hasn't been one that's lost in quarterfinals yet, um, and this is definitely not going to be the exception. You have 6090 Orbit and 1577 Steampunk, which are the two highest scoring robots at this event, facing off against the Blue Alliance. Um, and ultimately, I don't think anyone thought that this was going to be a close match, but I doubt people would think that the Red Alliance would manage to score 146 points let alone anyone would score 146 points in week one. Um, one other quick thing to note, this is not the official view or the official scoreboard from first. Um, their stream did crash and unfortunately we aren't able to find any other views of this match. Um, so we apologize for that. Um, but ultimately this is the only copy we could find. With that, let's start the match. Um, one quick thing to note here, um, if you look on the field, you have only two red or two blue robots. Their alliance captain seventy sixty seven isn't on the field. Um, ultimately, I don't know why they're not. It was an interesting decision, um, but this sets up a three v two for red, which definitely opens up the field, and we'll see how that affects it as we go on. Um, with that quick mention, let's start Auton here. You have 6090 at the bottom here running their 5-ball Auton. You have 1577 with a 2-ball Auton, and you have 6144 shooting their preloaded ball. Fortunately, 6144 misses, um, but right here at the end of Auton, um, we'll run it one more second here before we get to tally out. Um, you have 7 cargo scored by the Red Alliance with 1 missed shot. Um, unfortunately, one ball is still bouncing around here in the hub, um, and that's going to not count for the four, but instead count for two points once Teleop starts. Um, one other thing to note is if you look at the Red Alliance side, there is only two cargo on the field, which they are both there. Um, those are both really close to the hub, and future weeks, I would expect possibly having a few teams um, be able to implement some sort of machine learning and vision combination to possibly even intake those to score even higher in Auton with really the limitation of what teams can do. Um, but that's definitely not a level we'll see at most district or even regional competitions. Um, so with that, as we start tally up, 1690 is on the bottom here. They're almost on the Blue Alliance's side of the field already with how they ran their Auton. There hypothetically isn't any balls on the red side of the field besides for those that the hub return to that side. And we see that's true with the only two balls being from that hub return. 1577 is also set up really well to just start and go to that side of the field. 
Um, however, with the two balls being right there, as soon as we go into teleop, they're going to flip around and pick those up. 6104, this final bot on the Red Alliance is going to play counter defense to try to allow 1690 to score faster. Admittedly, with blue only having two robots, I'm not sure that's very necessary, um, but it does free up 1690 to some extent. So we'll start and go into Teleop. 1690 immediately goes onto the other side of the field and starts collecting all the balls, kind of in this quadrant here. Um, and 1577 gets the two balls on their side of the field. Um, so if we look at where all the balls are, for the Red Alliance at least, we have a couple over here, we have some over here, and the rest are really in the air or in the hub. Um, there's just not that many cargo. And this is going to be a pretty repetitive pattern throughout the match. Um, more often than not, almost half of the Red Alliance cargo is either already intaked or it's waiting to be scored in the upper hub. Um, and th that's probably going to end up being a bigger problem than we realize later on here with it taking almost 10 to 15 seconds for some of this cargo to return just due to the sheer amount of cargo that the Red Alliance is shooting, this could potentially turn out to be a really big issue at Worlds if we have a bunch of cargo just kind of bouncing around in this upper hub agitator and not actually um, coming down and getting scored. Um, so keep an eye on that as the match plays. The Red Alliance has a significantly longer than average ball return time. Um, so let's look at this a little more. Um, there is 61 oh, or 4104. 6104, my bad. Um, playing some counter defense, blocking off the Blue Alliance robot from essentially playing defense. Admittedly, they're kind of still trying to pick up cargo and score. Um, which is allowing both 1577 and 1690 to score unimpeded. Um, there are a couple of missed shots here by 1690 as they contact their defensive robot while shooting. Um, but for the most part, we aren't going to see too many missed shots out of this team for the majority of Teleop. Um, the Red Alliance has around an 85% shooting accuracy on the end of this match. Um, so we're currently with about 100 seconds to go in this match. Um, this stream is now currently back up in the back, so you can kind of look at some of the score there. Um, but ultimately, it's not too fruitful. So as 1690, they're just going to keep on going around, picking up as many cargo as possible. 1577 is generally going to try to stay away from 1690. Um, by staying on the other side of the field and they're kind of just going to play go around the merry-go-round um, and both kind of rotate around to pick up any cargo falling out of the upper hub so 1690 is currently going that way and 1577 goes that way and when they switch around and 1690 goes that way 5077 kind of goes back that way so they kind of are splitting the field to try to make sure that there's both Red Cargo um, kind of all over for them to use. One thing to note here, if we go back a little in this match, um, this blue robot, um, 5614, has already started their climbing sequence with almost 90 seconds to go. Um, that really opened up the door for red to just score and go around and be as maneuverable as possible all of a sudden we have a game that typically has six robots trying to collect cargo and score and at this point we have four on the field um if you count them all 4104 isn't really intaking anything um at any point of this match besides for at the very end um and for the most part they're just trying to make sure the blue alliance doesn't get in 1690s way as they are playing um, so you currently have this 8223 robot here still kind of doing some stuff on the field. Um, 
but they're not really going to impact anyone a whole lot. So as we play, we kind of still see the cycling pattern where one robot will go this way and one robot on red will go the other way. Um, and you kind of see these circles around the hub start forming. Um, they essentially are just going after whatever cargo is closest to the hub after it falls. Um, and that's currently rolling on the ground. But once again, at any given time, like we currently have five cargo coming down from the hub, which only leaves six in various places on the field. Um, and once again, this seems like it's going to be a problem more often than not. Um, as we were playing that, we did skip through a significant portion of the match. So the end game sound is going to sound here, and 1577 is going to stop cycling on this on the backside of the hub and start climbing. And this is really going to open up the show for 1690. Well, let's just take a quick second to talk about that. 1690 isn't going to climb in this match. They are confident enough in their cycles that they think that they can score more points by shooting undefended in these last seconds of the match than they can score by going to the traversal climb. Um, ultimately, in this match, that's not going to work out for them. They shoot nine cargo in endgame, and they only make six, so it is three points behind what a climb would be. But if they would have made those three shots, um, they definitely would have came out ahead. So... 4104 here is just going to kind of park in this back where there aren't any red cargo and stay out of 1690's way. And 1690 is just going to essentially play Hungry Hungry Hippos here and pick up as many cargo um, as they can. 4104 does attempt to intake those two cargo um, at the bottom of your screen over here, but 1690 kind of calls them off. Um, and so they move away and 1690 will score those. Um, and with that, that's pretty much the end of the match. Um, at the end, you have 1577 on the traversal rung. You have 15, or 54, 14. You have 5614 on the middle rung, and you have eight, two, two, three on this both kind of high middle rung. Um, so ultimately the blue alliance is going to get 16 hanger points and the red alliance is only going to get 15. But the blue alliance scored 40 or 51 cargo and the upper hub. Um, when I was counting this, breaking this down, I did count 54. So it looks like the scoring system did rob them of a few cargo, which only makes this match really more impressive. Um, ultimately, at the end of the match, they made 54 shots and they missed 9 for that shooting accuracy of 85%. Um, so if we want to look at how an alliance could potentially break the score in the future, one thing I could see as a really high bar and really a low reward, so many teams aren't going to do this, but if they apply some machine learning or computer vision to their Auton to look for cargo as they fall out from here and here, both kind of on the other sides of the fields, generally they drop pretty consistently um, and you can't catch them. But if you were to drive there with like one or two seconds left in Auton and then try to shoot, that would potentially yield more points um, for a team. Um, one thing to note is 6104 scored two points that entire match. They taxied at the start. Um, they missed their Auton shot, and they wouldn't go on to score again. It doesn't look like they had a climber, um, but especially with how little they did, if they had any climber at all, that would be even more points for red um, as they kind of just stood around for most of the match. And with that, that's going to be the match here. As we look at the Blue Alliance, we see that the score is 146 to 48. Um, really, with those three extra cargo, it looks like the FMS didn't count. That would be 152 points scored in this match. Um, and if the FMS would have counted that one more Auton cargo correctly, that would have been up to 154 even. Um, Looking at this match, as we see, 6077 didn't play in this match, so they didn't get points for taxiing. 
there are the two points for taxing that um, 6104 contributed to red. Um, and really it was just a masterclass put on by 1577 and 6090 um, and both staying out of each other's way and getting the next two available cargo throughout this entire match um, on one side of the field or the other. Um, as we see, um, neither 1690 or 6104 climbed. Um, as we mentioned, 1690 decided to shoot um, to try to get more than 15 points and they were really close to doing that. And if they were more accurate, they definitely would have. Um, and 6104 kind of just stood off to the side. Those are definitely the biggest areas for improvement, I believe, that an alliance could take to reach and break this high score, um, especially if you have your third robot um, climbing to the traversal um, bar. And even if like a last second shooter robot had a really quick six point climb, I think we're definitely going to see um, a match get up to even 160 points before um, district championships and worlds. Um, I don't think we're going to see that many of them, but I could definitely see some of these matches um, getting there. And with that, thank you for watching this episode of Fun Analysis. Um, we are going to continue to make matches um, and break them down and analyze them. If you have suggestions for what you'd like to see covered next, please let us know in the comments of this YouTube video or give us a message on the fun discord. We'll be looking out for those and until next time, enjoy your day. And thanks for watching. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. If you want to continue enjoying the excitement of robotics, come check out what's going on at Kettering University, including their combat battle bots team and first center. Turn your robotics experience into a professional career. Be sure to apply to Kettering beginning in August of 2022. Go to kettering.edu apply to learn more. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.